Hello everyone, uh, Data Pioneer here with the Linux Unix Tech Channel, and today I wanted to get back into my Farron OS uh, Linux system. Uh, here it is, 18th of January, and I thought I would uh, introduce you to the ZFS or the Zetabyte file system uh, installed in Farron OS. And so this is going to be a ZFS on Linux uh, video. I did one of these earlier, but it was just a presentation set to music, and now I wanted to actually demo using ZFS in the uh, Farron OS Linux system. Uh, setting up ZFS on Linux is a little bit different uh, depending on which distro of Linux that you use. Uh, but I'm just going to show you uh, how to do it in Farron, which is a uh, Ubuntu-based uh, system. Debian's a little bit different. Uh, and I have a, a website, uh, my personal blog, where I go into depth and detail about how to set that up in a Debian system. So I will put a link to that down below the video here and uh, show you that, all right? So let's uh, get into it. Uh, what I wanna do first is uh, tell you that what I plan to do is show you how to install ZFS on Linux in um, Farron, and then go about setting up some ZFS pools and some ZFS data sets, uh, how to access those. Uh, and uh, the best thing about it is I'm not gonna use actual devices. Uh, I'm in a VM here, a uh, virtual machine using uh, VirtualBox 6.0, but I'm not even going to set up uh, SCSI devices in uh, VirtualBox. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use a file system to mock or mimic, which you can actually do if you really want to. It's not really that it's you know it doesn't work. It does work, uh, but I'm going to set up uh, files files that represent the virtual drives uh, in the uh, Linux system and utilize those for my mirrors and my raids and that kind of thing. So let's get into it. Um, let me go ahead and open up the terminal, this console. All right, the first thing I wanna do is, I'm gonna see where I'm at. So I'll do a PWD, I'm in the home data pioneer. So let me change directory to uh, the root. We run a listing and uh, right now, this is the structure of the, of the root file system. Let me go ahead and uh, first thing I want to do is set up a directory called zdevs. All right, so I'm going to do a, uh, let me do a first a su to change to root. And uh, now that I'll make that directory. So I'm going to do a make dir a zdevs. All right, and now let's do a listing. You can see that I have the zdevs directory here. All right. This is where I'm going to install the files that I'm going to be using um, as virtual drives. All right, so let me go ahead and clear the screen. Um, first thing I want to do, though, after this is I want to make sure that I have ZFS on Linux installed. And to do that in um, Farron OS, it's simple. And I'm root already, so all I need to do is apt install zfsutils-linux. It should be already installed, and it is. But that's uh, how you do it, because it's already installed and is the newest version. All right. If I did not have ZFS utilities or ZFS installed, because we're installing the ZFS file system on top of Linux here. Uh, if I did not have that already installed, this would then go ahead through the installation process. But since I have it installed, it's telling me that it's the newest version, so I don't need to do it again. All right. Let's clear the screen here now. And so the next thing I need to do is CD into ZDevs. All right, and since I'm there, it's empty. And now I need to set up my drives. Now here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to uh, mimic the uh, SCSI drives as giving it SCSI 01, 02, 03 designations. And then I'm going to mimic a, another drive I'm gonna be using for um, a cache drive, okay, which needs to be a really fast drive as an SSD01, all right, so that you can see uh, the distinction between the two. In order to create files of uh, certain dynamic sizes, or actually physical sizes, I'm going to use the truncate command instead of the touch here to create these files. And so I'm going to use, um, since I'm root already, I'm going to do truncate dash s, I'm going to give the drives one gig in size each, 
and I'm going to call it SCSI01, SCSI02, etc. Okay. Oops. Okay. So six of these drives. Go ahead and list those out. And let me do a long listing. All right. And so here are my SCSI drives. I've got six of them set up now, and they're all one gigabyte in size. Okay. Now I'm going to add one additional drive, and that's going to be the SSD drive. And so let's go ahead and add that. So it's going to be uh, truncate dash S one gig or one gig SSD. Uh, and I'm making these kind of small drives because I only have 50 gigs of uh, space available here in this uh, virtual machine for this particular image of Baron, and I don't want to exceed that. All right, so let's call it SSD01. All right, and now let's do a listing of that and see what we have. All right, so we have six SCSI drives and one SSD for the cache. All right, okay, so now that we have that, next step in the process here, since we have ZFS installed uh, on Linux, the next step is to go ahead and uh, set up a first, our first pool. So we need to create that pool. There are really two commands that you need to worry about in, uh, in ZFS, and that is zpool for creating the pools and ZFS for creating the data sets. And the data sets are the uh, mounted uh, you know, mounted partitions, or not mounted partition really, mounted files in ZFS that represent the data set um, that you can access and actually utilize. All right, so let's create that first pool. I'm going to call that pool Trinity. And so let me do the command Z pool, create, and create what? Create Trinity. That's the pool name. And I'm going to create a mirror. And if you're familiar with mirrors, you know that there are two identical drives uh, of, of identical size that uh, are replicas of one another. All right. And so uh, when you're doing this with files, the one drawback here is you need to do a full path to that particular file. And so I'm going to be needing to do a Z devs SCSI01 instead of just SCSI01. Otherwise, I could drop the Z devs. That's the first drive. The second drive in the mirror is going to be ZDEVS SCSI02. That creates the mirror. All right. Now, the command that I use to see the status of the zpool that I've created is zpool. Uh, and then the name of the uh, status, rather. And the dash V for verbose. Okay. And so here we are. We have created a pool called Trinity. All right. We can see that Trinity is online, it means it's just healthy status. Okay. So its state is online. We haven't requested any scans, and those are called scrubs. And uh, basically, a scrub is when you request the ZFS to go through and check the drive using what's called checksum. And that's the other thing I haven't mentioned. Let me go ahead and mention that now. Every file in ZFS on the ZFS file system, which is a 128-bit uh, file system, uh, checksums every file. All right, So every file has a checksum. That way, every file gets checked to make sure that it's healthy. Uh, and if it's not healthy, it gets rebuilt. And so uh, that's the great thing about ZFS is everything gets checksum. And uh, scrub is a process whereby it goes through and checksums everything. All right. And this is what this checksum column is down here, all right, under here. All right, so here is the, the pool, Trinity. It is online. And here's the mirror we created. So we have the first mirror, which is mirror dash zero. It also is online. It's healthy. And then here are the two drives that we use to create that mirror, uh, SESI01 and SESI02, all right? Um, with the first mirror in place, what I can do is go ahead and create my first data set. And so let me do that now. And so I need to use the ZFS command to create that. So ZFS create. And Trinity is the name of the pool. And the first data set I'm going to create is my 
home directory data set name called data pioneer. All right. And the neat thing about ZFS, and you'll learn here, here shortly when I show you this, when I hit the enter key, is that it automatically mounts data pioneer underneath Trinity under uh, the root. All right. When I do this using the ZFS command, that's the neat thing about ZFS is you don't have to go through the process like you do in Linux of mounting uh, a file system, uh, mounting the directory that you want to uh, utilize and that kind of thing. It just does it automatically for you. And so let's do that. So I've created that uh, data pioneer. And so let's take a look at that. The ZFS list is the command I use to list out the, uh, the data sets that I create. And so here we are, Trinity data pioneer is the first data set it is 880 megs in size, all right? Each one of these is one gig, remember? Okay, so each drive is a gig. So two drives is two gigs, all right? But it's mirrored, so that means you're going to lose half of the drive automatically in the mirror because each drive has its own copy, all right? And so it's roughly uh, 1,000 megs and so we lose some of this drive space here in the uh, uh, information that gets written to drive because we've used 108k here and here we've used 24k and so we've got 880 megs available to us for this particular data set all right so if we go out and we take a look at um, you know do a listing of this uh, under trinity so let's do uh, let's do list um, dash lh. You can see that here is what we have uh, as we looked at earlier. And so if we do a cd to Trinity, and then we do a listing of that, you can see that we have the data pioneer um, directory. This is the directory, and the uh, permissions on that directory is read, write, execute. For the owner, read and execute for the uh, uh, see read write execute for the owner, and then the group owner is read and execute, and read and execute for everybody else. Right now, the owner of Data Pioneer is root, and uh, the uh, um, root is also the group owner of that, and then everybody else. So, root has the right to read write and execute. The group owner root has the right to or permissions to read and execute and everybody else read and execute. That's not going to give me what I need to get in here uh, and add files to Data Pioneer. All right. And so uh, as the first data set that I've created. So what I'm going to need to do is change the ownership of Data Pioneer to Data Pioneer, which is myself in the Linux system. And so to do that, um, I'm going to do need to, to run and I'm root right now. And I'm going to need to run Chone to change ownership of Data Pioneer to Data Pioneer of Data Pioneer. All right. Now let's run a listing again of this. And you can see now that that has changed to Data Pioneer and Data Pioneer. All right. So now I should be able to get into Data Pioneer and add files. And so I'm going to do that right now. So let's change directories into Data Pioneer, descend into that. We have 880 megs of space we can use. So basically, we've combined two virtual drives into one drive, and we have 880 megs of drive space seen as one volume. And that's the beauty of ZFS as well, is it not only is a file system, very robust, very uh, large uh, zettabyte file system, but it is also a volume manager all wrapped into one. So it's a file system, volume manager all wrapped into one. And so now that I've created the data set called Data Pioneer, comprised of two drives right here under the pool called Trinity, um, I can utilize that 880 megs to create files and work with that. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create change directory to Data Pioneer. And now that I'm in that directory, there should be nothing in it. I'm going to create three files. I'm going to touch three files. File one, file two, and file three. All right. And now if I do a listing, 
you can see that I have three files there. Okay. All right. So let's go out for a moment and let's go to the uh, GUI uh, here in uh, Dolphin. And let's take a look at what we have. All right. So we are looking at the file system here and we have uh, Trinity, which is the pool. If I open that up, we have Data Pioneer, which is the, uh, the data set. And inside there, those are the three files I just created. All right. All right. So we have access to all of those and we're, we're fine. All right. So let's go back out now and go back to the, um, the terminal. All right, so now uh, let's clear the screen and we have, let's run zpool. Oh, I'll do the up arrow and let's get back to that command. I can. zpool status dash V, and you can see that here's the current setup that we have. One pool called Trinity with a mirror and consisting of these two files. Let's go ahead and create, and we have another, we also have a data set set up. Okay, so we can access it and get in and do things with the pool that we have. And so that's under Trinity Data Pioneer, 880 megs because of the pool set up with two mirror drives, about, about one gig each. So let's go ahead and set up another mirror. And uh, let's take the next two drives, SCSI, SCSI 03 and SCSI 04, and set up a, another mirror. And we're going to then stripe across both mirrors in the system, which will automatically take place when we set up the next mirror. Let's go ahead and do that, zpool. And now this time, instead of create Trinity, we're gonna to add to the existing Trinity pool. So it's zpool add Trinity. And then we're gonna add a mirror and we're going to use zdevs scsi03 and zdevs scsi04, okay? So we're gonna create another mirror Let's take a look at that mirror and we're going to use the um, zpool status dash f command. And here we go. All right, so we have the Trinity pool still there. We have the mirror we created earlier, which is mirror dash zero. And now we have a mirror dash one, which is our second mirror of these two drives, which are one gig each. And then we're going to stripe across both of those mirrors. All right. And so uh, we have now virtually increased our uh, pool size to twice the capacity that was before. Let's take a look at that. And so let's do a ZFS uh, list. And you can see now that instead of only 880 megs available to us, uh, drive space in the volume, we now have 1.842, roughly two gigs, uh, which is, this is one, two, three, four gigs here. Two mirrors uh, striped across one volume. We see one drive, which is this right here, Trinity Pioneer, which is the data set. Two gigs, half of that. We lose 50% of that. All right, so we have two mirrors and two gigs of available space to utilize. We go back out to the GUI and we go back to uh, our file system and we go to Trinity. And if we right click on Trinity and go to properties, you can see that it says the file system that's being used here is not ext4, which is what we have installed here on Baron OS, but ZFS, mounted as Trinity, all right? Mounted from Trinity, mounted as Trinity, and it is the Zetabyte file system, not ext4. This is why we're able to use the ZFS commands, all right? And so uh, the size of that is 1.8 gigs free, all right? All right, so let's go out. And if we look at uh, Data Pioneer, you can see that it also says it's ZFS, mounted on Trinity Data Pioneer with 1.8 gigs free, utilized, to be utilized, all right? Uh, permissions on that, you can see here are these, User is the, the owner is Data Pioneer or the user is Data Pioneer. The group owner is Data Pioneer as well because I changed that with the chone command, remember? And uh, we have details here and then we have the share. Okay, we did not install Samba. You haven't been able to share anything with uh, Windows, for instance. All right, so let's cancel that out. Go back out to the terminal again. Let's clear the screen and let's rerun the uh, 
Z pool status command and see that we now have two mirrors and uh, four drives utilized. All right, so we still have SCSI 0506, and then we have that SSD drive that we want to use as a cache drive because it's uh, representing a virtual disk, which is very fast. These are SCSI drives, you know, spinning at about uh, 7,200 or 10,000 RPM. So they're a lot slower than the SSD drive we're going to use. So we would not use a cache um, as a cache, one of these drives to set up for that. We would use a very fast SSD or solid state drive. All right, so the next thing we can do in ZFS, which is kind of cool, uh, and we're not going to really show RAID Z or RAID Z2 here today, so I'm just going to show mirrors. One of the other nice things we can do in ZFS on the file system is set up our logs. All right, so the logs are not part of the mirrors here. We only, we're going to set up our own log mirror utilizing two more of our drives that we have available. And so to do that, we're going to do a Z pool add. And the pool that we're going to add that to. And we're going to add a log mirror. And the two drives we're going to utilize is ZDEVs SCSI05 and SCSI06. Okay. And if we run a Z pool status F as V again, you can see that now we have, in addition to our two mirrors we had set up earlier with these four drives. We now have a logs mirror okay, of these final two drives here that are SCSI. And so this is where our logs will reside. So all of our logs will go into a mirror. Uh, and what's this going to do for us? What this is going to do is it's going to divert all the logs uh, for our S ZFS system. And I keep track of everything in the ZFS. And it's going to be placed on... A mirror, which means that if we lose one of these drives, either SCSI 5 or SCSI 6, uh, and this becomes offline instead of online healthy, um, or degraded is what it will show. Unless we take it offline manually, it will be offline. It will be degraded. If one of these fails, um, then that means that we don't lose the log. Uh, it's mirrored, so we have an exact copy on one of these other drives. All right, so that's logs. So finally, to to represent um, cache in the system, which caching is uh, something that you can do in ZFS, which speeds up uh, some some things in ZFS uh, that you need to speed up. Um, you know, the ZIL, for instance, uh, which is your ZFS intent log. Uh, since ZFS does not write uh, over existing file system uh, and files that uh, get written to ZFS. It has what's called copy on write, which means it, it copies or it writes to an exact copy of uh, the block that it initially writ wrote to and is written to. Um, then once the, the uh, ZFS intent log tells it to write that copy on write block back, to the original, it will get written back to the original, and that way uh, you can eliminate what's called the write hole, which is something that takes place in, a, in in traditional RAID. Basically, you may have heard of that term, write hole, uh, because while the drive is being rewritten, if something happens, you lose power, then you lose the data. That's called a write hole. That's not something that happens in ZFS. In ZFS, because of the copy on write capability, there is no write hole. All right, and so let's let set up that very fast final drive in our Trinity pool. And to do that, we're going to run Z pool add, and then we're going to call add to what Trinity, and then what are we adding? We're adding cache. All right, we're going to add that final SSD drive, and so it will be Z devs SSD01. Okay. And here we are. So let's clear the screen. Let's run that command to uh, for Z pool status. And you can see that we have now a Trinity pool with one, two mirrors. We have the log mirror here. And then we have cache, which is our SSD drive. All right, so we can take advantage of caching in ZFS, speeding up everything so it's not 
dependent upon these slower SCSI drives, cache our information for logs and for our ZFS intent log and that kind of thing. And so it's sped up. Okay. Okay. So um, trying to see if there's anything else I wanted to show you here. Um, now that we have everything set up, um, let's go back to here and take a look at file system trinity and our data pioneer uh, for properties again you can see that it's zfs and now uh, the amount of space that we have is still 1.8 gigabytes and the why is that well that's because these are reserved these two drives are reserved for logs this drive is reserved for cache so this is the only these are the only drives that are available for actual data and the data set that I created, uh, which is the with uh, CFS list, lets me see that I have still 1.84 gigabytes of usable drive space in the volume called Trinity Data Pioneer. All right, so this has been a quick look at uh, CFS on Linux, installed in Farron OS Linux based on Ubuntu.